My name is Sunny, and I work at the New England Aquarium. All of us who work here have our favorite fish, and it's usually something special about the way a fish looks or the way it moves that makes it someone's favorite. We call these differences among fish adaptations. Well, what do I mean by that? Every animal has something special about its body or behavior to help it survive, even us. Our eyelashes help keep dust out of our eyes, and our thumbs help us to hold on to things. Every fish has adaptations as well. In this video, we're going to look very closely at three different kinds of adaptations among the fish in the New England Aquarium. First, we're going to look at fish's mouths. Did you know that different fish have different kinds of mouths to help them eat? Second, we're going to look at how fish are shaped and how their body shapes help them swim and catch their food. And third, we're going to look at the different ways fish have to protect themselves, sometimes by changing their color and sometimes by changing the way they act. As we learn about these three kinds of adaptations, you're going to draw some of these adaptations onto your worksheets. You can draw one we've learned about, or you can make up your own. Then, when you're done filling out your worksheets, you're going to create your own fish with your favorite adaptations. And that's the game we call Fishworks. Now let's meet three of our team volunteers here at the aquarium, and they'll help you play the game. Hi, my name is Xavier, and these are my friends and co-workers, Libna and Isaiah. Now, you may have already guessed here at the New England Aquarium, we love fish. So fish tricks is this really cool game about adaptations. You know, the thing that a fish has or does to help it thrive and survive in its environment. This takes careful observation of all the fish's body parts and trying to connect these to its behavior and environment. We're going to start with mouths and find out which fish mouths are the favorites of people who work at the aquarium. I really like the way the needlefish are adapted to eat. Their mouth is so long and pointy that it's also called a beak. This beak is perfectly adapted for sweeping its head around in the water to catch small and slippery little fish. Cow nose rays have amazing teeth that are perfectly adapted to the kind of food that they eat. They actually have flat teeth in the shape of hexagons that are great for crushing hard-shelled prey like scallops. Now I want to show you some of my favorite fish mouths. The archer fish may look normal, but it uses a built-in water gun to eat bugs out of trees. That's right, you heard me, bugs out of trees. It spits a well-aimed drop of water and bang! Grasshoppers in the water meet lunch for the archer fish. A very specialized jaw allows the archer fish to be a sharp shooting insect eater. Okay, so let's go check out another fish with a totally different kind of mouth. The goose fish, also called the monk fish, it doesn't really look like your average fish. Its body is as flat as a pancake and it has a gigantic mouth full of teeth. It sits on the seabed half covered with sand and pulls out its fishing pole. Not a real fish or pole that you or I would use to catch fish. The goose fish has a very well adapted dorsal fin. The French spine on a dorsal fin looks like a built-in fishing pole and lure. So while fish remain still, the built-in fishing pole dangles all around to try and attract unsuspecting prey. Even fish have to go fishing too. Now that you've seen some real fish mouths, it's time for you to make up some of your own. Pause the video pull out your worksheets, and draw some cool fish mouths that you think will help the fish eat. Hit play when you're ready to continue. Have you ever heard of a lumpfish? These fish are one of my favorites because of how they move, or rather how they don't move in their environments. The lumpfish have pelvic fins. Those are fins on the underside of the fish that form a shape of a suction cup. This means that a lumpfish can move to a rock or to some other surface and hold on tight. So we've talked about some cool adaptations with fins. Now let's look at a fish with some very special skin that helps it move. 
Have you ever noticed how the sand tiger shark swims through the water so easily? Part of it's because of its torpedo shaped like structure. Another reason is because of its skin. Now I know what you're thinking. Skin? I thought sharks had scales. Well that's true. But for sharks and rays, we call it skin because their scales are so tiny. If you really want to impress your friends, you can say that they have dermal denticles, which literally means tiny skin teeth. Their skin helps them swim so quickly through the water that clothing companies look to shark skin as inspiration for designing new swimsuits. Dermal denticles also help them silently flow through the water so unsuspecting fish don't even hear them coming. So let's hear from some other aquarium staff about adaptations that help fish move around. If you've ever waved a ribbon or a flag through the air, then you already have a pretty good idea of how a moray eel moves. Their long slender body is adapted to wriggle between the rocks and the reef. The large scale four eyed fish has really weird eyes that allow it to move at the surface of the water. The eyes can see above and below the water and find predators and prey. Now it's time for you to create your own favorite fish body shape. Take out your worksheets and draw some fins, scales, eyes, and body shapes that you think will help a fish move through the water. Hit play when you're ready to continue. Almost every creature in the ocean is food for something else. So, the adaptations that help an animal hide from potential predators or sneak up on potential prey are very important. Let's start with one of my favorites, the leafy sea dragon. These sea dragons are the masters of blending in. This special adaptation is something a lot of animals have and it's known as camouflage. Most animals use camouflage to hide from predators or to sneak up on unsuspecting prey. Leafy sea dragons are in the same family as seahorses and can be found along the southern coast of Australia. They use these leaf-like protrusions all over their body to make themselves almost undetectable in kelp and seagrass beds. Let's talk about cuttlefish. I know we're talking about fish here, but I just have to talk about how cool cuttlefish are, even though it's not a fish. Did you know that cuttlefish are in the same family as octopuses and squid? Cuttlefish have chromatophores to protect themselves. These are little color cells all over their body that allow them to change colors to blend into their surroundings. What do some other fish do to protect themselves? Like many other fish in the ocean, blueback herring find safety in numbers. This behavior, where fish swim in a tight, large group, is called schooling. One reason they can do this is because they have a lateral line along the side of their body. The lateral line is like tiny sensors that allow the fish to feel what's right around them. So if a predator is coming and one fish swims quickly to the right, chances are the whole school will swim that way too. Take out your worksheets and think of some other ways a fish can protect itself. Can it change the way it looks? Or does it have some special behavior or part of its body that will scare off a predator? So that's fish works. Pretty fun, huh? Based on what you have learned, we hope you will create your own fish with adaptations for eating, moving, and defending yourself. Here's some questions to keep in mind. What kind of body shape does your fish have? What kind of eyes and mouth do you want your fish to have? What do you want the fins, scales, or skin to look like? And how will your fish defend itself? Thanks for playing fish tricks with us, and remember, be creative. Use what you learned here and use your imagination and have fun.